If you'd like to learn how to create simple vector portraits like this using Inkscape's trace bitmap function, stick with us. So I've opened up a clean document in Inkscape. First thing I want to do is import the image that I'm going to use for the portrait. So I'm going to come up to File, come down to Import, and in here I've got a copy of the photo. I've just downloaded this from Pixabay. I'm going to double click on the image and press OK to the settings. So I'm going to hold down Control and roll my mouse wheel just to zoom out a little bit. We drag it off to the side so we haven't got the page showing through. So the next stage is to open up our trace bitmap dialog box. So if we come up to path, we can come down to trace bitmap. And that opens up our dialog box on the right hand side. If we drag on these three dots, we can just make our dialog box a little bit bigger. And if we press three on the keyboard, it will center our selected image and make it a little bit bigger. So at the moment, if we come over to our trace bitmap dialog box, we can see that we've got single scans selected. We want to use multiple colors, so I'm going to come over to multicolor. Under detection mode, we've currently got brightness step selected, so we get this black and white image. We want to use colors, so if we use the drop down menu, we can select colors. So if you look at our preview window down the bottom, the actual image that we're going to get produced when we create our trace is a lot more detailed than the result that I want. So I'm going to change some of the settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn stack on. Stack has the effect of removing any gaps between the traces. You can either have it tiled where they're like individual tiles that sit side by side, or you can have it stacked where it's layers stacked on top of each other. I find that stacking tends to give a better result. So we're going to put stacking on. Next thing I'm going to change is if we come over, we've got smooth. So smooth adds a little bit of Gaussian blur to the image. So it blurs the image slightly and this gives it the effect that when we take a trace, it smooths the line slightly. So we can turn that one on. At the moment, we've got eight different scans being produced. I want quite a simple image. So I want to reduce that down to six. And this is definitely more the look I'm going for. So if we come down to details now, we've got three different options in here. We've got speckles. This dictates the size of the speckles that Inkscape will ignore. Since we want to get rid of all the fine detail, we can turn this right up. So I'm going to turn that right up to the top. Under that, we've got smooth corners. This just smooths out uh, any sharp corners. So again, we want it quite simple. So we can turn that right up to the top. And then under that, we've got optimize. This works a little bit like simplify. So it tries to reduce the number of nodes in our image. So again, we want it to be quite simple. So I'm going to turn that right up to the top. So now we've made these adjustments, we can press apply and see how our image comes out. So as we can see, we haven't got smooth lines yet. These are still quite jagged and detailed. I want these to be a lot smoother. So we kind of need to be able to use the smooth function, but increase it. So what we're going to do is mimic what that does. So if we just get rid of this, so we press delete, go back to our photo, we select it. As I said previously, smooth um, smooths the lines by adding Gaussian blur to the image before taking a trace. So we could do the same thing. So if we come up and open up our fill and stroke dialog box with this button at the top. So with the image selected, I'm going to come down and add a bit of blur. So I think about there looks good. So what's that? 8.5%. So now we've blurred our image. If we just go back to our trace bitmap dialog box, so if we look at our preview window, we can't actually see any differences. Uh, this is because Inkscape always looks at the original image. We want it to look at the image, including the blur. So what we need to do is make a copy of our image. So if we come up to edit, we can come down to make bitmap copy, click on that. And once it's thought about it, it'll make a copy. And now we're looking at the copy. So we can see now, if we look at our preview window down the bottom here, all the lines have smoothed out and it's looking a lot simpler and more like the image that we're looking for. So when we make a copy of our image using the make a bitmap copy, it does it to the default resolution, which is 96 DPI or dots per inch. We can change this. If we come up to the global preferences, so we can click on this button here, a little spanner and screwdriver. open up our preferences box, we want to come down to imported images. 
and in here we've got a few different settings that we can adjust we've got the export default resolution and underneath that we've got create so a resolution for creating bitmap copies currently set to 96 you could change it in here if you wanted it to be anything different so most photos actually have a resolution of about 300 dpi so by making a bitmap copy at 96 dpi we're actually reducing the amount of information that inkscape has to deal with which for the project that we're working on works really well so we get rid of that so let's make a tracing of our blurred image and see what it looks like uh, so this is much much closer to what i was going for so one thing you will notice is the lips um, aren't pink in the example that i showed i showed it with pink lips because we've got a reduced color palette inkscape tries to find the colors that best represent the whole of the image so fine details like lips are likely to lose their color for the effect that i'm going for i want the lips to be pink so what i'm going to do is we can hold on to this and shift it out the way we can shift our blurred copy out the way if we select our original image we can then press ctrl z and move the blurred copy back we can press ctrl z again and move our image back on top now we've still got the original photo selected so if we come up to the top here with our selection tool selected we can move the photo to the top now if we go into our fill and stroke dialog box we can reduce the blur so we get our image back to being nice and crisp so i want to cut out these lips so i'm going to come over and i'm going to grab the bezier tool and then i'm just going to work my way around the lips we click and drag click and drag and we just go round and we make a rough rough path we can always adjust it with the um, nodes tool afterwards and there we have a nice pair of lips so if you're not familiar with how to use the nodes tool and the bezier tool together i'll put a link to a video in the top right hand corner and you can go and have a look at that and that'll explain everything so the first thing i want to do is get rid of the fill color so i'm just going to come down to the bottom and i'm going to click on the x to get rid of the fill color now i've got a gray outline which suits me fine not too dark i'll zoom in a touch if we go to the nodes tool we can adjust our path until we're happy with it so i think i'm happy with that next thing we need to do is cut out this section of the face or at least mask the rest of the face behind it so what we're going to do is if we get our selection tool we can select our path we we'll hold down shift we we'll select the photo behind and then we can come up to object down to clip and over to set clip and that hides the rest of the image now if we go back into our trace bitmap dialog box we're still getting the whole image displayed this is because as i said earlier inkscape looks at the original image so we need to make a copy again of our lips so to do that with it selected we're going to come up to um, edit and down to make bitmap copy so now we've made a copy it's now just looking at the lips now if you notice we've got white around the edge of here so if we make this copy we just press apply we get an image with white around the outside which isn't what we want so we want to remove the background so if we press ctrl z to get rid of that we're going to come over to our trace bitmap dialog box and we're going to tick the remove background we select our image again it's still showing with the white background on here but if we press apply it creates a copy without the background i press ctrl z to put it back over the top so if we hold down control we can use our mouse wheel to zoom out so it's looking pretty good but we've got a bit too much detail on the lips so i've i've left in too many colors so what i'm going to do is i'm going to press ctrl z to get rid of that copy i'm going to select our lips again and this time i'm going to reduce it down so our lips look a little bit simpler i think four colors works quite well so if we press apply and that looks more like what i'm going for so i'm going to hold down shift i'm going to select the tracing behind and then we can group those together by coming up to our group button at the top by the way if your tools aren't laid out like this and this is how you'd like them to be i find it much easier because we've got a nice clear representation of all our tools at the top 
um, you may find your tools down the side. If you want to change it so your tools are at the top like mine, if you come over to view, right down at the bottom, there's a wide screen box. If you uncheck that, your tools will be laid out the same as mine. So all our paths are now grouped together, so we're unlikely to move them accidentally. But if you've used Inkscape, you'll notice that now we can only select it as a whole piece. There is a way we can select individual paths within a group. If we come over and select our nodes tool, as we move it across, you'll see that it selects the individual paths. So I want to darken up this section, so I've clicked on this. We need to come to our fill and straight dialog box. At the moment, I've got my color wheel. I find the color wheel is much better for doing jobs like this, where you want to be able to see the colors that you're changing to. So we've got a choice of settings that we can use up here. If you're in hue, saturation and lightness, then you can just come down and you can click on the color wheel. And that brings up our color wheel, which is a nice, easy way of visualizing what we're doing. So we want it to be a bit darker. So we can drag it down here. If we click off, we can see what we've done. I'm going to just darken this gray section slightly. I think that looks quite good. I think I'd like the orange sections just to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to move those up. And I just want to bring out a bit more color in the lips. So I'm going to select the section of the lip that I want to change. I'm just going to gently adjust the color. I think I'm quite happy with that. Um, I think in, in my example image at the beginning, I'd put a frame around it. If you want to put a frame around yours, you can come over, select the rectangle tool, and then we can just drag a rectangle over the whole lot. We can remove the fill color by coming down to the bottom and clicking on this X. And to change the stroke color, you can either hold down shift and select one of these, or as someone pointed out in the comments recently, you can actually just click on the mouse wheel to select things. So if we wanted to make it a black frame, we can come down here, we can click on our mouse wheel, and that actually selects the color. So down here, you can see that our stroke color is now black. Can't really see it very well at the moment. So if we come down and right click on the stroke width down the bottom here, we can increase it up to say 16. Give it a nice chunky border. Get the selection tool. If we press three on the keyboard, it will center it nicely for us. So that's our finished article. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.